Hey what is up everybody, it's Koga here and I bring you my first ever tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how I do my scaling or screen pumping. Um, so let's get right into this. First off, before we get started, you're going to want to import all of your clips, your intros, your cinematics, your music, and also your gunshots. And then you're going to want to start syncing either by timer mapping, time warp, or Twixter. I usually use Twixter, but on this one, I actually just use timer mapping just for the sake of making it quick for the tutorial. I already did this just to make the tutorial go faster so you didn't have to see me sync it all but if you'd like to see a syncing tutorial or at least how I sync with either Twixter or timer mapping I can do a tutorial on that if not there's thousands of tutorials that you can look up you're gonna want to search up transform drag that over to your adjustment layer there's definitely a few different ways on to do this I'm gonna show you a couple it will make a difference on what type of edit you're making and or style of edit you're making for how big the percentage of a, a scale you want I'm going to start this off right at the beginning of the clip because I have a fade in. The first sync point. I'm going to start it right here. And I'm going to pump this up, the scale up to, I don't know, let's just say 110 to begin. Then you're going to want to hit the stopwatch to make a keyframe. Now you hit U on your uh, adjustment layer. And then I'm going to go to the second, the, uh, second sinking point which would be pretty far away actually you know what we're gonna sink these little um flashes for the heck of it so here you're gonna want to place it down another keyframe i'm gonna adjust this one i usually like to make mine if it's not a shot around one five to one eight so i'm just gonna go one six uh get right here and i'm just gonna Keep hitting this little diamond button. This keeps making the same keyframe that you had, you have up. I'm just gonna continue on for each sync point. You can either hit Control in the left arrow key to move frames back, or you can just go up to the preview box and hit this little arrow back for previous frames. Now you're gonna wanna go about two or three, maybe even four keyframes behind um, your actual 106 keyframe. As soon as you see it starts in. Actually, we're gonna make this at three keyframes. Starts big, pumps back up. Now the quicker and more efficient way to do this is just to copy two keyframes, one 100 and one 106 or whatever your, your pump is, and just copy and paste on each of the keyframes but I'm just showing you how to do it manually like this. Now I'm gonna RAM preview it just so I can show you the example. So that's the first way to do it. Now the second way would be keeping everything the same, but now we're gonna hit F9 or right click on one of the, um, the keyframes. Go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now we're going to click on our scale and we're going to go up to this button over here. It's the graph editor. And if you don't know what graph editing is, you're about to find out. Basically, they show like the waveform with all the plot points and show how quickly things transition into the, the next keyframe. So you could keep it like this just as it is. And I'll, I'll actually RAM preview it right now with just the easy ease. A lot of people actually do just leave it basic easy ease um that's not bad uh some adjust the keyframes a little bit some people do it like this by just pulling down the little uh handle This will make the pump a little shorter than what it actually would be because it reaches the second keyframe sooner because you're dragging it down. If you drag it more up, it takes a little longer. You can try this one. This. 
Yeah, there you go. Um, that's not bad at all. I do it a little differently. I'm pretty sure uh, my buddy Glades told me that this is the way Red Zant does it, but this is the way I do do it. Um, so here we go. Let me get right into this. So we're just going to get rid of all these keyframes behind all these like 100 keyframes real quick. Delete those. Now we're going to go back into the, uh, the graph editor and now we're going to want to highlight all these. And then we're going to grab onto the left handle and drag it down all the way to 100 or at least where you'd like the keyframe to, to be at the lowest point. I want mine at 100. You're probably going to have to adjust each and every one because they're at different lengths so they won't all drop down to 100. But you're going to want it closer, more straight down, not exactly straight down but with a little tilt right at the 100 drag all these to handles and adjust them and you can zoom in by clicking on this little like mountain and then adjusting where you are to make sure you're not going underneath because then it will zoom out too much like I believe yeah this one is a little too underneath the 100 drag that one down and then where they're all these are all the same they should drag down relatively the same besides that one there right there now they're not all exact at 100 I'm just doing this for the sake of the tutorial but if you want to be exact right at 100 then I would suggest actually making sure each keyframe ends at 100 but this is what this looks like and this is the way I've been usually doing it It really depends on the edit, but yeah, let me drag this down a little more so you can get a bigger view. Now basically that's how you do your screen pumps or scaling. Uh, if you like what you saw, if you could drop a like, um, I'll do my next tutorial, probably about 20 or 25 likes. Um, you know, if you do enjoy and you want something else, if you want to give me an idea of what I should do, let me know. Cause if not, I'll probably just do the syncing tutorial. So yeah, everyone, this has been Koga. Have a great day. Posner. Levitate, levitate, uh.